All right. Hello, everyone. There we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. All right. A few people in tonight. Cool. Hello, everyone. I'm Casey. Welcome to Tuesday Hobby Paint and Chat Night. Uh, weekend's over. It's time to start the week on this very cold day. All right. Hope everyone had a good weekend and is ready to start the new week. It's not too cold where you guys are at. It's quite chilly here in Minnesota today. All right, so for today, I'm working on these galvanic servo hollow, hollow, haulers, haulers, servo haulers. Let's try that again. Uh, for um, the Games Workshop Warhammer 40,000 40, or 40K. So we're going to be painting it roughly to this, all rusty and, and such. So, at this little crane thing. And we got another one with a claw. The claw. And we got a big, big old constru construct here. So, I went ahead and um, applied uh, metallic over a primer with the airbrush. Added some uh, washes and dry brushed up a bit with the, the lighter colors. And now I am adding the rust effect. Rust effect. Jeez, can't speak tonight. I apologize. I need more coffee, I think. So we're working on adding some, some rust on here. Uh, this right here in the center, that's going to be a separate color. I'm thinking of a, like a blue-gray. And then we're just going to add a bit of more... Um, once this is dry, the rust wash, I'll add some... Uh, dry brushing a bit with uh, silver just to kind of add some chips so this is the rust wash I'm working on and using monument creature caster monument pro krill paints some mahogany and some orange mixed together and then I added some Vallejo glaze medium because I don't want it really thick I want it Kind of like I'm glazing the rust over it or washing it over. So besides those three pieces, I also have the attachments to Imperial Knight for another commission that I was working on. So I'm doing the same technique where I did the metals, dry brushed them up, and I'm going to add um, some shading and touch them up. need to touch up the blue so some pieces will have this like teal color so I'll probably be going back and forth between those while I'm waiting for uh, washes to dry I also have Armin off to the side that I'll be working on too so, yeah it fits up some stuff on him so I got a few things going on tonight. What are you folks working on? Any hobby projects you're working on? Or just handing out? Listening to me ramble on? It's always nice. <laughs> if you have any questions on miniature painting or painting in general, I will do my best. You know, go ahead and pop those in the chat and I'll do my best to answer those. So I just want this a very thin wash slash glaze and I'm just putting it on all the metal areas very simple terrain is actually really easy to do you don't have to make it too fancy
Oh, we're just rusting it up, making it all dirty, like it's been sitting in, out in the environment for long periods of time. And then once this is all dry, I can go back and, like I said, do do a couple more uh, highlights on it. And that should be it. These are commission pieces for a local friend. gamer to add to his table. So they're really fun to paint up. Excuse me. Nice change from painting troops or single models. Be careful where you place your hands so you don't touch the, an area that you put the wash on and get your fingerprints on there. I'm going to have to make some more. Just quick and dirty. Doesn't have to be neat. That's why these <laughs> type of paint projects are so fun to work on. No real um, set formula. It's a rough two to one orange to the mahogany with a lot of <laughs> glaze me medium. Gives me that nice burnt orange color. Hey, Griever, how you doing? I'm working on galvanic servo haulers. All right, rust them up. So I got these. <laughs> Ready for work. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just rusting them up. I got all the metallic on there, the base coats, washes, and dry brushes. Now I'm just adding some uh, a rust wash. <laughs> yep, that's what I mean too. So I have a few different ones. I have three different little bits to add that I'm working on here. And we have the big one. And then while I'm working on that, I'm also working on those um, additional weapons for the Imperial Knight from a few weeks back. I 
Hope you didn't have to go out in this weather today. That's crazy out there. Thankfully, the only time I, I need to go out of the house because I work from home, nice benefit of that, uh, is that I, I take the, my kids to, to school. I drive them to school and I pick them up. And thankfully, because of this nasty weather here, the less they had yesterday, today, and having I mean, tomorrow off from school. It's been closed, so don't have to go out. But where I live, they decided that today they wanted to clean the parking lot, so I had to move my car. So here in Minnesota, at the moment, uh, I believe with the wind chill, it was like negative 45, something like that. It's insanely cold. And tomorrow is going to be like negative 60 because of the wind. Brr. So tomorrow, to show off how cold it is, I'll be wearing my nice winter hat <laughs> on straight. Trying to stay warm. I definitely like this. <laughs> this looks really cool. Just dirty him up. I like the look of um, the machines because it's very uh, steampunk. the Adeptus Mechanicus models. They're kind of like a cyborg look to them. Ugh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alien, I, I feel sorry for you guys too. It's just it's too cold, it's too cold. My wife had to um, go and move the car back just as I was starting the stream, so it's not fun. Yeah, tomorrow's is going to be even f more frigid. How are you doing tonight, Alien Menace? Hopefully staying warm. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Now that is orangey and rusty. <laughs> rusty bits. Sure, I get it. all the areas with this. I'm holding it by the very finding a spot to hold it can be a challenge too. So I want to get this wash down here. Do 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 do. All right. Oh, I get underneath the claw here. The claw. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed the last one. Sorry about the cold. My wife, she's starting to get all sniffly too, and it's like, oh, I know that's gonna happen to me too came in from moving the car and my 
chest was having I was having a hard time breathing and it was acting up my asthma. So I took my medicine and now it's kind of still like stuck in my throat. So I apologize if I sound all um, grovelly or grainy type of thing. Alright, now we got this big one. So before I start, I'm going to make some more <laughs> red wash, uh, uh, rust wash. And these pieces will end a rather large commission that I was working on. A lot of uh, scenery pieces. Um, a post apocalypse. Apocalypse. Ruins. Let's see if I can read them. Hold on a minute. I'm not going to show all of them because I have quite a lot. Just worn and run down scenery pieces. Is that nice? I like the the roofs come off. A bunch of these walls. It's like deck plating. A couple ones like this. Actually, this is the only one like this. Very cool. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to take a picture of them. So there'll probably be a few here and a few there. <laughs> but they were they were really fun. Too thin. That's all right. This is a little bit thinner. That's all right. We can build up the layers here. I'm not being neat about it. I'm just slapping it on here. You just want a, an old beat up brush. Stop being lazy, Dreaver. Get back to work. <laughs> some more uh, fallout mi miniatures that I'll be working on later this week too, Dreaver. It's more of that, uh, is it Wasteland Warfare from that. So. After I finish these, those are nuts in line. Oh really? Is it the game itself or the models? I 
They don't look too bad to me. Yeah. I've seen worse, <laughs> to be honest, but they're not that bad. And it's the first... Yeah, usually the first wave of stuff, if it's brand new, it does take a while to for the company to get it to where they want it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, um, this is, uh, the name of the company, Mo 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 Mofius, Mofius, I know I just butchered their name. Uh, they've done other stuff too, so I think they're, they're learning this new, um, resin. And I think they've been around for a, a few years at least. They have like a Star Trek game too that the models look really cool just to collect and paint. I've only seen the um, the survivors or the humans models, the um, the bigger ones of the the mutants and stuff. Those look really cool, and the one gentleman I'm. Um, that I that I mainly that's what I'm painting for him is uh, the that'll probably be the second I mean the Nets batch that he sends me will be a bunch of mutants and this current one he sent me some more um, survivors and some scenery pieces to work on so I'm I'm expanding into the scenery business of painting. Which is cool because I used to paint. I haven't painted scenery in a long time, so it's got me wanting to work on my own scenery pieces. Deathlaw. I haven't seen that one. I may have and not know the name of them. I'm still learning the names for them. Do for the highlights is just use a sponge and add that. Use a sponge to dabble the pink chips on here. I kind of want this to settle in the recesses, but not too thick. So I'm kind of just dabbing it on here. You definitely want to use an old brush because you will ruin your brush doing this. Rust isn't very... Uh, adding this wash, it's not um, a thin coat, even coat. It's just sporadic and uneven you want to have some texture in there <laughs> let's play rotate the piece there we go You still want it kind of an even over there, but not a full, you know, not completely even. I mean, it depends on how much rust you want on it. The client wanted these really rusty, so they've been sitting out in, uh, outside in the 
and the weather I'm getting all all kinds of wonderful little rust growing on it This is a rather large piece, and so it does take a while to get all the nooks and crannies you gotta work around in. As I'm rotating it around, I'm finding areas that I missed. <laughs> So what are you working on tonight, Griever? And anyone else? Any hobby projects you're working on tonight? Ah, oh, the high elf ones. Yeah. Remember you telling me about that the other last week. Very cool. Did you make it down to the source um, Sunday, Griever? Or did you stay at home because of the cold? That's definitely why I stayed home. I just did not want to drive all the way down there. Painting a Reaper Mini. Sweet. What, what Reaper Mini? I saw that they're sold out of the that new um, Black Bones Owl Bear for this month. I've heard good things about the new material, so. It's a problem I have with the regular bones. The larger models made out of the bones are much better, but the smaller ones are just too flimsy. In fact, I was working on the hill giant last week. And I finished him up. The base mainly. He was already finished on on the stream, but he turned out really cool. This is a Reaper Bones, so he turned out really cool. I like how he turned out. I think the new um, Bones kit starter. We'll be shipping in a few weeks, sometimes in sometime in February, if I remember correctly. And uh, ordered a uh, the dueling dragons from that 
Crimson Blades from the stream. He he ordered some stuff. He didn't get the uh, oh the oh cleric. Cool, very cool. He didn't order the um, the core set. He just kind of picked and choose which ones he wanted. And I asked if we could add that Dueling Dragons set to it, so that'll be fun once I get that. I have a bunch of um, Reaper Pathfinder miniatures that I picked up on clearance at a local game store that I have sitting in the corner that I'm going to uh, get them all prepped up so I can just grab them and paint them on stream quick and easy. do that sooner than later <laughs> yeah the Reaper models in general they're just so fun to have a nice um, palette cleanser and just paint off one-off type things the uh, with kids models those those can be fun too Getting really rusty. <laughs> In fact, a lot of those Reaper models I'll be painting while I'm at uh, Con of the North in a few weeks. So I think I'll just do it that way. <laughs> try to find some more um, just adventure type D&D characters so I can paint while I'm at, at the convention. Alright, so this is when it starts to get really difficult trying to get in here. <laughs> so we'll just flip it over. to use up the rest of this in my palette and then I'll come back and paint underneath the carriage there. I think the other stuff is dry. Some cases just to make sure that you can get a handhold, paint it in sections here. know if these are electrical nodes or what those are all right so that aside dry so we'll do a quick dry brush highlight with silver on that one let's see how this one's um, looks like there's still some wetness on there that's when the hair dryer comes into play
the glaze medium extends the paint a bit, so it's still kind of tacky. Even using the hair dryer, I, I still want to set them aside so they dry fully. So we'll go ahead and work on these. We'll do some shading. These are still kind of rough. So now I'm going to go through and just add some darker shading with Adrat's Earth Shade. I'm just using a dry uh, well palette, plastic 10, 10 cup well palette you can pick up at any art store or even at a um, in the craft department for a buck or so. There's another one where it's like sits. It has like sits of them. I don't know where that's at. So, pretty good amount <laughs> for now. And get a brush with a nice tip on here. So I'm just going to go through and just add some shading into it to kind of help break up the brightness. I don't want, I could easily do a all overwash, but that would cut down on the highlights I've already added on here. So just painting the lower portion of it, of the area, gives me that shading. And this right here will be that, um, I need to redo that teal color. I had to go back and redo some of the metal on here. Thicken this up a bit with some paint, so some dark umber from Pro Grill, nice dark brown. Oh, there we go. This bottle's almost empty. Thankfully, I ordered a new one. <laughs> one of my all-time favorite colors. I use it for pretty much everything. So we're just kind of darkening, kind of thickening up the wash a bit. We're at a slight color shift in there. Because otherwise I'd have to go back over it a couple times with just straight Adrat's Earthshade to build up that color. This is just kind of speeding that up. And it's still quite thin. So. So the, the arm is attached at this point, so the light's coming down. So all up here will be brighter than underneath. So, I mean, if you hold it up to your lamp, 
coming straight down, then you can see where your, sh your shading is going to be. And because this is a larger model, or for, you know, this is an attachment for a larger model, you want to emphasize those dark shadows and make them a little bit darker, make the highlights a little bit brighter. This was kind of a miscast on the fingers. The, the mold itself shifted, so what's kind of a little off there. I try to fit it as best I could with the knife and some files. Pulling the paint down to the shat, you know, to the darker area. So when I lift up my brush, that's where the most pigment will be left behind. So I want it to be darker down towards the bottom, or like up here, just pulling the paint into the shading, or into the recesses, I should say. So then when I highlight, I pull to the top, and then I lift up, and that's where the most pigment will be left behind. Kind of gives it a grungy look, too. Oily. These are out on the battlefield, so they're not going to be nice and clean right off the showroom. <laughs> they're going to have some dirt and grime on them, some chipping. sword here I'm holding it by these uh, the tubes and stuff for now because to get all this area and then once that's all done I'll hold it at this point so I can get those tubing so you just gotta figure out what areas to hold so you're not getting paint you're not smudging the paint or anything Very good. Good for you. That's good news nonetheless. I did it a long time ago. It just got to the point, it's like, you know what? I could spend this money on so much other things. <laughs>
Yeah, I see the pricing of cigarettes, and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's insane. Uh, how long ago did I see? I think it's about 20 years? About 20 years ago that I stopped, I stopped smoking. Sword. using the side of my brush to pull it down towards the bottom. Feathering the top here. start pulling that up because I'll get the, uh, the dreaded uh, coffee stain but it actually works really well because dirt and grime and oil will uh, sit on that edge coming down from it so it adds to it it works in this sense but if it would if that was a uh, like a cloak um, piece of cloth you wouldn't want that thick thickness <laughs> no, <laughs> no stud juice. This is um, attachments for that, for Steven. These are just additional uh, weapons. He's going to add magnets to it. I kind of want to do another uh, knight, but not right away. <laughs> I'm working through these, and I'm doing some... Um, the servo haulers. So I'm just waiting for the all the the rust wash that I have on them to dry. How are you doing tonight, Mr. Scud? Oh, it's over there. I finally got that um, the head. <laughs> the statue head from Justin that you designed for me. It's so cool. I'm looking forward to painting that up. I don't have it in arm's reach. It's on the other side of the room. I'm just adding some darker shading to these area, these uh, additional weapons. All right. Very 
very hard to hold on to these <laughs> and not drop them. converted Slanesh Imperial Knight, so it's very brightly colored. Um, I think the uh, the videos for that are still down below in, or in the VOD, the VODs. I need to transfer those over to my YouTube. He was working on another one where it was a Nurgle, a Nurgle um, knight, so it was all decayed. And... Over around it to see if make sure I got everything that I want on that before moving on to the next piece. So as you can see, as it it dries, adding that little bit of paint gives it a unique uh, shading very quickly. All right, just a couple more pieces. Same thing, just pulling it down towards the bottom of it, where the most shade will be. Teal will look really cool. Bring that nice pop to it so it doesn't look all dingy metal. This one and 
this were Forge World pieces, if I remember correctly. you know like hot metal burnt and we'll give some uh, bright OSL or lighting on these coils too that'd be fun so depending on how well work goes tonight It'll probably be on tomorrow night that I do that because I'm just working on these while I'm waiting the for the main project that I'm working on the haulers servo haulers getting dried so I kind of like I have multiple projects on on the table so I can go back and forth so while I'm waiting for a base coat or a wash to dry on one thing I can go work on something else and kind of just constantly working through things I have multiple projects in different stages of completion here around my studio that's one of those that they'll eventually get all finished <laughs> then I have other ones yeah don't we all Then I get I start new projects before I even finish the ones I've got. It's like, oh, that's a cool one. Let's start that. dry I have quite a lot of that wash left over so I'm going to go ahead and pour it back in here <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at pouring it back into the dropper bottle but that one time that I make a mess would be on live streaming <laughs> in front of all of you alright alright so for this guy the basing or the, the the base of it I'm not gonna worry about doing the uh, wash on that I'll come back to it um, it's still got some wet spots I can see it it's still kind of glossy in certain areas 
So we'll let that dry. I might not be able to get to that tonight. But I don't want I don't want to add more to where I'm holding it. Because I'll just wipe it off with my hands. I don't know. I might be. Okay. So let's double check these. Yep, that looks to be dry. Quite rusty. So I just want to add a little bit of um of a dry brush of silver. Just a little bit to show some um, chips from the rust coming off. Not sure if it's still tacky or not. Alright, so I'm going to grab my silver. Even over the, the gold, bronze, or yeah, the gold area. I'm still going to use this color. One to speed everything up and then it all kind of ties it all in. find a good dry brush here. There we go. That's an old brush. Put some paint on your brush. Wipe off the majority of it. To where there's hardly any paint on there. And then I'm just going to drag the brush across it. I want to make sure there's hardly any paint on here. Almost like a, I'm dragging it across and I'm also kind of tapping it to give it a bit of more touch. Some areas are still wet. So it's almost like a dry brush slash stippling. So I'm kind of tapping it too to get um, texture. You know, just random marks. Oops, sorry about that. I'm out of the camera here. I'm gonna have to add some more wash here. So this will just be doing in just sim this a few stages. We're kind of going back and forth. Just random tapping to make it look like, you know, the rust is chipped off. You want to keep it to where you, it would look like it would chip off, you know, from like the moving parts here. You know, like at the edges. It's where it would have some wear and tear. And if you're not sure, um, just Google search you know, rusted metal for pictures.
So right here where the the wheels for the the claw part would be chipped off from the the rust because they'd be moving. Doesn't mean that these machines are completely unworkable. It's just that they've been out in the environment and the elements on random planets and so they just gather rust. pushes the the rust back so it's not so prominent it definitely gives the pieces a story it's like showing that oh those been out side far too long but they're still kind of working These areas right here will not be metal, they'll be uh, a different color, like a gray, br uh, bluish gray. So. And this technique would also work on, you know, not just scenery, but uh, your models too, if you wanted to have rusted weapons, armor, things like that. I always paint the areas um, to completion, to where they look nice and neat, and then I dirty them up. So it'll be like the the final layer on, on the top of all of it. With any weathering, I'll do that. I'll I'll paint it to where it looks nice, like it just came off the showroom floor and then I'll dirty it up and chip it up and everything. All right. So, real quick and easy. Nothing to it. Some other little bits that go with a little tool bomb, tool box, and a fire extinguisher. <laughs> That's the problem with the gloss for uh, gloss medium. It it thins it, but it prolongs the paint. So it might you know depending on how much you put in it. 
depends on how you know how, how long it will take to dry. Probably won't be able to get back to that till tomorrow, just to be on the safe side. Because I don't want to start um, working the area while it's drying, because you can actually pull up the paint, the previous layer. So I'm just going to add a bit more highlights to these weapons here. Same idea with the silver. Concentrating more on the edges. So like I said, it's a lot of um, back and forth. You know, you highlight it up and then shade it down and go back and forth and just constantly going back and forth like a teeter-totter to balance it out. brushing and washes, different washes. Yeah, it's still kind of wet there, so. These are in the, you know, post-apocalypse, far future type thing, so they wouldn't be looking all neat and clean. They would have some wear and tear and weathering on them. Whether it's a science fiction setting, like it is for Warhammer 40,000, or, you know, fantasy setting... <laughs> Because they're out in the elements and everything, it's not going to be all nice and shiny. <laughs> Also, don't want to take forever to, to achieve that look. <laughs> Depending on what it is, if it's a uh, showcase model, of course you want to take the time to make it look nice. But if you just want to get them to look on, get them to the table, play some games. Yeah, quick and easy ways of doing things. You want to make them look nice. You also 
you know, you want to play games with them. Doesn't mean that I don't like to do, you know, take my painting to the to the extreme and see how far I can push it. Been doing more and more competition stuff, so I'm really enjoying that. It's a nice change. Chain sword. wipe up the paint I had on my palette to begin with. So now we're going to paint this area on here. Clean that brush better. There we go. Don't do my eye here. So we're going to use the dark gray blue. As the base coat. And this color against the orange will make it look. It'll be a nice uh, balance between the colors. The blue is not too bright. Keep it still kind of muted. Taking a very, you know, taking a number two um, Kolinsky sable brush from Zem Brushes. And just base coating that, that, all the areas that I want this color. Just being very careful I don't get it on the uh, metal or the, the rust rusted metal that I just went through and painted up. So I'm using a smaller size brush 
then a like a four, a number three or number four, just so I have more control of it. And the pro acryl paints cover really well. I think my palette's throwing off my lamp, my camera here. The white balance is. Let me double. Let me check that real quick. I think I might have left my white balance on. If it's going to, there we go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, white balance is left on. Yep, that looks better. All right, that looks much better. love how smoothly smooth the uh, pro krill paints the base coats it's just one one coat really you might have to do a second one depending on the base coat you know underneath coat but even over black primer it's kind of pretty much one coats the yellow kind of have to do two but that's just yellow because the pigment but um the yellow covers really well and that's a bright yellow too so is that a little bit of water so the paint flows really well off your brush mainly from that you know just tapping or from cleaning it in the paint pot there's still some moisture in there and I got enough moisture coming in my uh, wet palette here that it flows really well this stage I can kind of see where my colors are going to be I had in my mind how with the the blue gray will work against the rust so and we'll paint this up to be all nice and pretty and then we'll you know chip it up add some weathering effects to it mainly with that is just taking a uh, sponge from packing and just tapping it with um, some metal to make it look like it's all chipped up the paints come off
Also, I wanted a small brush so I can get in here. And these hard to reach spots. And just try not to get it onto what I've already painted. But if that happens, it's easy to fit, so. If I catch it right away, I can wipe it off. Either my finger or a damp brush. Or just wait for it to dry and then just paint over it. It's no big deal. Like right there. <laughs> It's a blue buggy. <laughs> manipulate the model around. It's easier to manipulate and rotate the model than it is your hand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to paint like that. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and give it another base coat just to get a nice solid coating. Go ahead and apply it back here to this computer pad or terminal, I should say. Just making sure I don't get it on the little metal bits. Rotate the brush to get a nice point. There we go.
once you add some color to it, different coloring to it, it really makes it makes it pop. Excuse me. All right. All right. So just do a quick glance around, make sure I have all the areas I want this blue gray. But definitely need to do a, a second coat just to get a nice, thick, nice, uh, even coverage. Doesn't take long for it to dry. I want to make sure it's fu fully dry before I start applying more paint. Alright, so this last bit back here. Do the same on this guy. <laughs> Got a nice little dinosaur guy sitting here. <laughs> So this whole front plate here is all metal. Just paint around it. And then... Yeah, let's just paint that all blue. It's got some rivets on it that I can go back and pick out with silver, so it's not a big deal.
looks like I missed painting this metal rim there. I'll have to go back and do that by hand once I'm done with all the other stuff. The other stuff. If I don't like where I put a base coat, I can always go back and repaint it different color. We'll have some light coming from there. Some nice yellowish orange bright light coming through it. Same with here. Make it look like a train link. after seven. Okay. I'm not sure if I like that. I might go back and repaint that trim so it's all the same. But we'll see. I wanted to do all the metals first because it's a little you know, all dry brushing is messy and I don't want it, I didn't want it to get onto the blue, this blue gray here. Even though I could touch it up with the base coats, you know, reapplying the base coats, but. that stage out of the way because it can be so messy all the dry brushing and the washing and then just come back and touch up areas with this base coat because usually I'll do a base coat all over you know, do all the base coats to see how the color scheme works, and then do all the washing, and then go back and do all the detailing and highlights. But usually with the dry brush, I tend to do that at the beginning because it can be so messy.
Not the most exciting part of painting is the base coating, but it's definitely the most important <laughs> because everything else builds off of that. Just with this, I need to be very careful because I'm painting around areas that I've finished. But like I said, if I mess up, I can always go back and fix them up. So it's not like these are done done. They're done to a point, and I can always go back and add more or do touch-ups, things like that. To adjust, to adjust some highlighting or add more shading to it, depending on the other areas. So I always paint it to a, to a point where I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. So okay, let's we'll work to that area. Now we'll do the other areas up to that point, and then go from there. History buff, zero five. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? Or today, wherever you're at. This thing, this is a, uh, what do they call it? The Galvanic servo, servo hauler. It's one of three. There's a, it's like baby, medium, and then gigantic. <laughs> Big one. Potatoes. Hey, Crimson. Sneaking in. How you doing, man? So these are uh, scenery pieces for uh, Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. Really fun to paint. Having some, having a good time playing it. Yes, avoid the cold. It's too cold outside. I actually had uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The schools are closed, so the kids are home, so I don't have to take them out to to school. <laughs> you like the little one? Yeah, the little one's really cool. I'll be um, after I highlight up and shade up. The uh, blue, I'm going to make it look all chipped and worn, too, so to add to the uh, the rust. Yeah, I was kind of happy that I didn't have to go out in the cold, and then where I live, they decided that they wanted to clean the parking lot of all the snow, so I had to move my car. So I had to go out today and move the car out. <laughs> I'm doing good. Staying warm. So I'm working through these. And I'm also got some uh, Imperial Guard, not Imperial Guard, Imperial Knight, the big robots uh, for 40k. Uh, some additional weapons that I'm working on too. I got the metal all done on this and I just need to touch up the, the teal. Yeah, I believe so. They got uh, rules and everything. So I'm guessing in it you can move them around and they're like movable terrain so they get in the way. Thank you. I like how they turned out. It was basically just painting up the uh, metal like normal and then doing a, uh, a 
a rust wash, like a reddish brown, orangish brown wash over and then just adding a bit of highlight with the silver to make it look like the rust is chipped off. Yeah, I believe in the game, because um, there's terrain where they move around and they hide behind it, but these uh, have traps, so I'm guessing they move and they do stuff too. I haven't seen them in, in game yet, so. This is final part to a rather large commission that I was working on. A lot of terrain for the commission, so. Save the best ones for last. <laughs> Tomorrow's gonna be really cold. I'm not glad I don't have to go out. <laughs> At least I don't plan on it. All right. So, yeah, this bottom part is is where I was holding it, so you can see where the metal is, and then I started adding the the orange rust. That fantasy nerd. I didn't see it. Thank you for the follow. I think it said fantasy nerd. Hopefully I, I caught that right. Please say hi in the chat so I can see your name again. Oh, history buff. Alright. <laughs> no, there was another person I just started to follow, who followed too. Hold on a minute. It's not showing up in my um, chat who just followed. There was someone else that, that followed after you, History Buff. I think it was Fantasy Nerd. Yes, Fantasy Nerd. Thank you. <laughs> and how are you tonight? Alright, so now I'm just applying a second layer just to make sure this... I. Get a nice smooth coat of this blue gray. And that is this color dark gray blue from Pearl Grill by Monument. And Creature Caster. Anyways, thank you both of you for following. Welcome. We'll get it figured out soon enough. Or not at all. <laughs> How am I... I this is where I put the paint at, and I draw from there to add, you know, for thickness and everything. And it looks like a little dragon. <laughs> it's just cracking me up. Ah, I see. Two accounts. I get a double accounts. <laughs> I haven't put it together yet, Crimson. It's. Still in its container. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was planning on um, working on it um, later this week.
Yeah, I just I haven't had a chance to look at it since I got it from you. <laughs> That one's going to be fun to paint. I'm looking forward to that. Well, I'm excited to paint it. So, I'm trying to figure out some coloring for it. How oh, I want to do that. How's your uh, hill troll coming? This second layer of paint, I don't have to do too much. It's just making sure I have nice coverage over the whole piece. Where is he? There's mine. Ah, uh, that sucks. Well, when it warms up, you're always welcome to come over here and, and paint. Or we can always meet up somewhere. So, here's my, my guy. He was pretty much finished on the last, uh, last week. And I just did the, the base. Quick dry brushing of grays over the base. So nothing special on the base. I believe the weather is going to be warmer this weekend. So if it... So I'll probably be able to... Go up to um, the source for... Pink night or pink day. some crannies here oh I, that's awesome yeah but those pictures are just it looks great yes definitely is that a different um, material that you printed it in the the coloring looks different on it from the picture you sent me Is it a is it a resin or is it the plastic? Oh, okay. Yeah, cause the the resin that you did for the angel, it's like a dark, like smoky gray. Very cool. Do you have anything else that Josh is working on at the moment? I haven't talked to him in a while. I think I talked to him on his birthday.
Manticore, ooh, very cool. All right. Oh, uh, when you have the chance, Justin, uh, where are you going to do that? Was it the Shadow Dragon from the Lost Dragons Kickstarter for me? All right. No hurry. Um, yeah, these look so cool. <laughs> So, you print these in pieces? Obviously. I'm glad that he uh, listened to you and not do those blades. It doesn't look like the blades are on there. Or is that what these are? These are a, um, for everyone else, this is a, uh, a 3D print on a resin printer that uh, Justin, aka Crimson Blades, printed up. This is, uh, it was designed by a good friend of ours, Joshua Black. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it looks like right here is the blades. They don't look too bad. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like the blades on there? I got all the little bits in there. But I did find an arm with fingers. <laughs> well, if you want, I can fix that where I can cut off the, the tip of these blades to make them look like they're straighter, like feathers. It's not that hard to do. Okay. Because I know we were both like, eh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I'll try it on one of the um, extra pieces. Alright, so there's a leg, thigh. Okay, so All right, so she attaches like that. These bits? Okay. That's weird. Why do you have this? Why do you have the thigh here? Because this is one piece. Hmm. Okay. When you printed it, you put the, the head and the thigh on there. Yeah, there's just a lot of pieces. I'll have to um, file the pegs here so they can fit in there better. Was this two separate um, prints? Because this seems much lighter in color. Alright, 
Let's see if I can kind of put this together. Okay. I see. Yeah, I'll just have to um, do some trimming to make sure it fits in there. Oh, that looks cool. That's going to be so cool. All right. When I'm done with these uh, terrain pieces, I'm definitely going to put this together and we'll get started on this. Very cool. So would you say this is uh, a 30 millimeter? So, uh, the size? Size-wise, that's what it looks like. It looks like a standard uh, 30, 32 millimeter. Very cool. Alright, yeah, that's what it looks like. Very cool. And I like the gray of the, um, the resin. Wow, he's got a lot of detail on this. With all the the body armor. It's kind of hard to see it on the on the camera because of the gray, but once I put a primer on it, do my um black, white and gray or black and gray primer, that'll turn out really nice. Very cool. All right. I got a, a bendy piece here. Do they all bend like that? I should be able to use a hair dryer to straighten that, right? Just like a regular resin. Warm it up and straighten it out. That's really thin. Well, we'll definitely try it, try that out and see what happens. <laughs> Why did you make um, five different ones, or so many, um, were you having issues with the print, or you just printed up a bunch of them? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the wings seemed a bit... <laughs> All right. Kind of still glossy. Do they still need to be um, cured? Or is that, that okay? Because it seems a little bit glossy right here on the tip. On the top portion there. feel tacky is I, I noticed the well kind of I guess it wouldn't hurt huh All right. put her back in her little bots okay it should be fine it's a learning experience Yeah, it's probably like the last bit of the the resin in your container or some sort. All right, well that'll be my project for tomorrow. I'll get her cleaned up and and ready. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense for that. All right. Where's my? There we go. Okay. So we got the base coat of the bl the blue gray on there. So we're going to shade it with some Adrats Earth Shade. Maybe. Let's see if this works. 
or I just will screw it up. So I'm pulling the wash down to the recesses. So I, that'll be the darkest area of it. I'm trying to do the same movement with the brush. So they're going this way and then that way. Or that crisscross. I'm going to get a nice even coat. So that angel Justin is she's a fallen angel, so she's like a dark angel or something. So like dark colors. Or does it matter? All right. Very cool. Starting to get an ideas of how I want to do it now. <laughs> Oh, um, they're kind of bent, but I'm guessing I could I could straighten them out with the hair dryer, right? I think just because of the thin material, they kind of curved. So I have a few different ones. I like I think four in there that I can I can try that and see if that works. If it doesn't uncurl, I might have to um, clip it off and just um, replace them with a brass rod or something. Yeah. Yeah, spears and fingers. The fingers look really cool. There was one that had, you know, that did have all the fingers. But yeah, they were really tiny, the, the, the scale of it. I mean, if you were to maybe put in a, a larger, uh, print it at a bigger size, I don't think it that would be much of a problem. But I think you want to keep them at that. We want to keep it at that same scale as everything else. Okay. But yeah, I, I I think having it across the board, they're all that same scale, that 32. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'll set that aside, let that dry, and I can come back and add more to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what um, Games Workshop did. They always exaggerate things. That's why some of the uh, some of the casts they have like really big hands, bigger face. They have that heroic scale. Is what they call it. But if you look at uh, models from Games Workshop, the Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, those are true uh, twenty five millimeter scale so they're they're in proportion
and I believe WizKids is at that true 25 millimeter. That's why they're so small. Yeah. But no, that was um that was from the get-go. They the new line wanted it one of the models in true scale. In fact, I like that scale. <laughs> I like painting those. I need to finish my um, Army of the Dead. Aragorn is finished. I just have to complete the base, but he turned out really cool. See, now this, I don't mind if I get some of this uh, Adrat's Earthshade on the, the metal areas. That'll just add to the shadows of them and how they look. I just want to make sure it doesn't pull and I have a nice smooth transition. I'm not, not sure what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to add another layer of the Adrat's Earth Shade, but instead of doing it all over, I'm going to concentrate more towards the bottom of the areas to give it more depth in the shadows. So just building up those layers, it'll make it darker. It's kind of spotchy up here because it's a flat panel, but I'll be painting over that when I build up the highlights. So it's almost 8.30. All right, so that's still kind of wet. So while I'm waiting that for those areas to dry, we'll go ahead and paint the teal, the turquoise color I got on here. And I'm going to 
to switch to P3 paints because that was the paint I used for here. It's the Formula P3 from Privateer Press. This was Meridius Blue was my base coat. Some darker teal and then I have a highlight of Arcane Blue. So the same thing like I did with the, this color on the other models. I'm just trying to go in here and just base coat this area. The Formula P3 paints are really nice too. They they cover really well. variety of colors. Keeping with the uh, paint scheme from the night that I painted that these are for, so sticking with the, the correct colors that I used on that. So when you're applying your base coats or you do it one way and then once that's dry when you apply the second one you go the, the opposite the opposite way or you rotate it and go that way that way that gives you um, better coverage quicker and uh, it's like the, the layers are kind of like a, a basket weave so it gives you a better coverage in the short amount of time and you know from the brush strokes it gives it that basket weave look or idea it doesn't look like a basket weave that's for sure <laughs> So now that I finish this, once it's dry, I'll go like this way, or I'll go diagonal.
8 o'clock right now. We've got about 30 more minutes till the end of the stream. We should be able to get the, the base coats on all of these pieces. And you can see, well, probably not. Yeah, you can see the brush strokes. That's why I do at least two coats of paint. So I get a nice even coverage. that dry and work on this area up here. It's being really neat. Just a small little area here. In fact, you'll probably see the um, Imperial Knight that I'm painting these pieces to add to in the um, slideshow. It's the only knight that I have in there. <laughs> the only one I've painted so far. Alright, so we'll let that dry. Tracker's not up to date. It's just all over the place. Problem I have with these P3 paints, if you thin it too much, it starts to become a, a blaze, which is really nice for that, but if you're doing uh, base coats, it's, it takes a little bit longer. Too thick of a coat because it obscures details and you get irregular 
the layer looks clumped up and it's just uneven. You don't, if you have it too thin, it just takes longer to coat. And that's what's going on with these. I have it too thin. I think there's some other areas to put the blue, but I think I like the metal there.
if there's any other pieces on here that I wanted to do blue. Nope. Alright, let's do the last one. remember correctly with the Imperial Knight the eyes were kind of like an orangish red so I'm gonna do the same on the glow here be a nice contrast to the, the teal turquoise color seems to be my theme for right now doing blue or turquoise and orange Go ahead and put on the second layer here. And that should wrap up for tonight. So I went this way, now I'm going this way, and that gives me a very solid base coat very quickly. All right, Crimson, have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Over, I'll be painting that a different color, like probably a ivory.
nice solid color on that. And I'll work up the shadows and then the highlights on that tomorrow. So I'll just kind of finish off the hour just doing the second layer on these. Uh, we got the shade on these, so I'll build up the highlights on that and the chipping. Get those finished. And then for this guy, we'll do all that same, same stuff I did on the other on the smaller pieces we'll just do the same thing on on this big guy tomorrow for tomorrow's stream that I was showing off so we'll see how far I get on putting that together tomorrow and get it primed up and everything second layer goes on a little bit quicker because you already got that base that first layer on there so just want to get a nice smooth even coverage so it's better to do two maybe even three thin layers than one thick one because if you do a thick layer the paint's all clumpy and obscure detail faster. see you can still see some of the base coat underneath so going over with the second layer covers that up just like that Last bit right here.
So that's looking good. We're getting close to being finished with these. So I just need to finish up the blue and then some detailing on this one definitely you know doing the light on that and then the burn on the gun and then some of the the tubing touch of those those will be done these are getting close to being done all right oh i forgot the toolbox paint that real quick Give it a base coat of that dark blue gray. Certain colors start to break up on the wet palette, and the, the grays tend to do that. So you just mix it back up when you need to use it. Highlight on uh, base coat on this. Problem is trying to hold it without getting paint on your fingers. It's not coating very well because it's bare plastic, so I'll have to put a sealant on there, paint over it. Alright, that's good enough for now. Get some color on there. Alright, we got about five more minutes, so we'll go ahead and close up. Right. Yeah, well, that's close enough. All right. Thank you very much for joining me tonight on Tuesday's Hobby Paint and Chat. Be sure to come on back tomorrow night. I'll be here starting at 5:30 Central Standard Time to about uh, 8:30, and we'll see what we're going to work on then. <laughs> so. All right, everyone, have a good, wonderful night. Thanks for coming in, and we'll see you soon. If you haven't already and want to keep up to date on when I stream, please click on that follow button. You can also check out uh, my other projects, uh, completed projects on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, also on my website. All the links are down below under the social media. So thank you once again. Have a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.